Hey guys, welcome back to How to Produce Electronic Music Without Tearing Your Hair Out. I'm Jordan, your new electronic music producer friend and instructor. And in the last lesson, you guys learned all about envelopes, ADSR, and you even took your first exam. How'd you guys do? Now that you've finished with the melody portion of the class, we're going to move on to the second M in music production. But wait. Do you remember what we talked about in the very first lesson, Introduction, Foundations of Music Production? In that lesson, I told you guys that when all you really need to know about music is that when you think about it, you think, mmm, M-M-M, -M -M. melody, movement, and mixing. Those are the three pillars, the three core foundations of music production, and you've already mastered the first one, melody. So congratulations. Today, we're going to cover the elusive topic of rhythm, and I'm going to start teaching you how to develop your own personal workflow and why it's so important. In fact, workflow is so important that in the future, I intend on making an entire lesson just around that topic. But for now, let's start with vocabulary. These are the key terms you want to be on the lookout for during the movement section of our course. And by the time we finish, you'll know all these definitions. See how many you're already aware of and which ones you need to learn. Let's go through this rapid fire just like the first time. Tempo, BPM, sampling, resampling, freezing, loop, color and tone, time stretching, sequencing, choke, LFO, quantize, channel, record, record quantization, swing, tap tempo, gate, triplet, metronome, drum machine, and arrangement. And we're probably going to cover a few more terms here and there, but those are the core ones you're going to learn as you progress through this series of lessons. And if you already know all of those definitions, you might be able to skip this lesson and go ahead and move on to the next one, but I suggest you just skip ahead in the video instead and see if there's anything that uh, you can learn from this. The few basic things that you need to know are very easy to explain. You've probably heard of tempo and beats per minute, at least related to your heart rate. You know that your heart beats a certain time a certain amount of times per minute and that's the same thing as like a dance track beats per minute if we say 128 beats per minute is what electro house tracks generally utilize that means every single every 60 seconds we have 128 beats and a beat is determined by a metronome the metronome is built into every single DAW, and as you raise and lower the beats per minute, or the tempo, which is the same thing, tempo is just a measurement of the beats, I'm sorry, beats per minute are a measurement of tempo, so as you increase tempo or decrease tempo, you're increasing beats per minute and decreasing beats per minute, respectively. And the wonderful thing about working in this digital age is our technology will automatically, for the most part, scale your tracks to be quicker or slower, even after you've already written the whole song, just by adjusting the tempo. So the DAW keeps everything timed, or the sequencer keeps everything on time, on beat, by keeping it in step with that metronome. So one of the first things we always do when we're starting to create a drum loop is we activate that metronome and we get a little click on the downbeat. And the downbeat is basically bump, 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 bump. Every single one of those is considered a downbeat. If you want to arrange the track, most of the starting elements of melodies and drums will be on those downbeats. And where we create rhythm is by creating sounds that don't happen on the downbeat. That's where rhythm and swing come in. Swing is a tool that's built into most DAWs and most sequencers, which will allow you to move your notes forwards and backwards so that they sound more lifelike after you've recorded them. So if you're playing a, a certain drum loop and then you decide this sounds like it's 
just kind of robotic like it's just droning on it's perfectly on time and it just doesn't sound right to my ears that's where swing comes in and you can manually do this by just kind of moving notes around with your mouse or you can do it by adjusting a, a knob or a slider that has the word swing on it so now that you know beats per minute and tempo are basically like your heart rate and that each different genre has its own unique BPM, let's talk about the rules of each genre. I've created a little infographic to help you understand which tempos or beats per minute are used in each of the most popular electronic music genres right now. And as you notice, I don't just say, oh, this is at this specific beat BPM, I usually give you some sort of scale between, oh, this is between 120 to 135, you know, something like that, because BPM varies song to song, and there is no rule. The only reason that genres tend to stick around a certain BPM is for two reasons. One, because speed is going to be very important to the kind of feeling of the track, where if something's slower and has a lower BPM, it may feel more relaxed or it may feel more rhythmic, whereas something that's higher in BPM may feel more uh, nervous or exciting or action-packed. And that is pivotal to each genre. However, it's not the only reason. The second most important reason why people stick to a certain BPM when dealing with different genres is for the DJ. So if you're going to be working in electronic music genres and you think that your music might be played at a club one day, it's good if you're going to be writing a uh, electro house track, for example, you probably want to do it in 128 BPM. Why? Not because that's the best BPM for electro house music, but because so many other artists are already using that. So when someone is mixing your tracks into their live DJ set, they're going to be trying to tempo match it with all the other tracks, and it's more convenient for them if it is already in that BPM. That's also where like extended intros and outros come in. Uh, different genres of electronica that are meant to be played in clubs often have drums at the very beginning of the track that just kind of keep that beat going so that the DJ can effectively mix the that song into the next song in the set. If you're not going to be working in electronic dance genres like that, you don't really have to worry about those rules and you can really feel free to kind of use whatever BPM you want. But here's the general idea. As you can see on the screen right now, hip-hop is around 80 to 115 BPM. It's generally down tempo. I even write a lot of hip-hop in 60 BPM, and the reason being is because when I go double time, that means I can make it 120 beats per minute. Oftentimes, a track will double in tempo briefly for choruses or for breakdowns to make it feel more exciting during different sections of the song. So when you're choosing your tempos, you're not just choosing 60 beats per minute or 120 beats per minute. You're choosing what's going to be half of that and what will be double of that. Because if you want to go half time or double time, you're going to cut that tempo in half. Generally speaking, tempos do not change throughout a track. Sometimes, especially in older music, tempos would change quite often, but that's because they didn't have timekeeping mechanics like they do now, and everything just kind of flowed as the artists jammed out. Well, now that we have everything kind of timed to all of these grids, some people might say that's a good thing, some people might say that's a bad thing, but the point is, everything pretty much stays one tempo, and I don't really recommend experimenting too much with changing tempo in your track until you become more advanced in your production techniques. So hip hop's around 80 to 115, techno is around 120 to 160, dubstep is about 70, and it usually goes to 140 during its half time or its double time sections. Same thing with trap music, it's around 140 slash 70 BPM. You can really say one or the other. Um, hard style is around 150 beats per minute. Drum and bass is about 160 to 180. Grime is 140. And those are just, 
you know, some some examples of the different beats per minute so you can see how each genre has its own kind of speed. So hopefully you understand tempo and BPM now.